Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at how securities are traded. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the various markets that exist and the order types that exist as well. This topic is covered in an essential or principle of investment course, whether it's a graduate or undergraduate. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, finance, tax, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them share them put them in playlist if they benefit you it means they might benefit other people connect with me on Instagram on my website farhatlectures.com you'll find additional resources to supplement and complement your accounting as well as your finance education I strongly check out my website the first thing we're gonna look at is the four types of markets and those are the first one is direct search direct search is the least organized type of market Simply put, it's not active, it's sporadic. Simply put, a direct search is basically, if you want to sell your car, you may look for a specific seller. So there's no market out there, you, you are doing this yourself. So you're dealing with your friends, with your family, this is what's called the direct search market. We also have a broker dealer market. The broker dealer is more active than the direct search because the broker, the person that's in that's working in this market, they find it profitable, it's worth it for them to offer search services to buyers and sellers. What are we talking about here? What would be a broker market? A real estate agent, a real estate broker, because there's a lot of people trying to buy and sell homes. So what you do is you become a broker and this is what the broker dealer market is. Also another example of it is investment banker. Investment bankers, what they do is they find buyers for, for companies who are issuing stocks for the first time, which is called the primary market. That's that's also a broker dealer market. We also have the dealer market and the dealer market is NASDAQ as an example of a dealer market here. The activity, the trading activity is very active. Otherwise the dealer don't make a profit. The dealer here, they specialize in various assets when we're dealing with NASDAQ, usually stocks, uh, stocks. And, uh, and dealers, they purchase those assets for their own account and later they sell them for profit from their inventory. Simply put, think about a store. This is what a dealer market is. What, if, if you own a store or a supermarket, what do you do? You buy and you sell. So from a dealer's perspective, they have what's called the bid price and the ask price. What is the bid price? The bid price, it means from a dealer perspective, they're willing to buy. For example, let's assume this is we're dealing with Apple. Apple stock, they're willing to buy Apple stock for $365.49 if you want to sell it. But if you want to buy it from them, they will sell it to you for $363.52. You might be saying, hold on a second, aren't you buying less than what you're selling it? Of course, because this is the spread. The spread here is three pennies. The spread is the dealer's profit. Now, is the spread always three pennies? The spread depends on many factor. One thing is the riskiness of the stock. If the stock is not active, it doesn't have liquidity, it doesn't have depth in the market, well, the spread is higher. Why? Because you are taking a risk when you buy and sell that stock. Also, the volume. If you buy shares in 100 lots, the spread is usually lower because this is how shares are traded. Also, the availability. If the broker has the stock available, if the dealer has the stock available, then they're going to charge you a lower spread than if they want to go out and buy it. And this process happened within milliseconds. So let's assume the dealer the dealer does not have the stock. It doesn't mean they have to spend time, go look for it. Automatically, their system will go ahead and buy it from somewhere else, but you might have a higher spread so the availability also matter we also have the auction market the fourth type of market what is the auction market think of the, about the nyse where all the traders can converge to buy and sell into one into a one location or one electronic platform this is what an auction market is market three and market four this is called the secondary market and what is a secondary market it means we're traders investors among themselves trade stocks so when i buy stock today i bought stocks today i sold stocks i am i am i am dealing in the secondary market because i bought the, i bought those stocks from another person from another dealer i'm sorry could be a dealer but from not from the company itself not primary market so the set the mar, dealer market and auction market mainly deal with secondary secondary market now Moving from market to order types. When you buy and sell stocks, you have two type of orders. You have market orders and price contingent orders because you have many of them. So let's take a look first at market orders. And when you place a stock, when you place a buy or a sell stock, 
using a market order, it means you care about the speed. You want to sell or buy as soon as possible. So market orders are to buy and sell to be executed immediately. Speed is what matter at the current price. Now I put the current price in quote because you know, you don't know the current price. You know the latest price, but what you sell at is the next price. You don't know what the next price is. So let's assume there is a bid price of 365.49 and an ask price of 365.52. And let's assume you want to buy Apple, 365.52. Well, here's what's gonna happen. Let's assume this is, I'm logged into my account here, and I want to buy 100 shares of Apple, and this is the bid, and this is the ask. So basically, uh, uh, that's, that's the bid and that's the ask. And basically, if I want to buy it, I'm gonna be buying it at the ask price, at 365.52. Now, this is the last, this is the last, this is the last ask price. It doesn't mean I'm gonna buy it at 365.52. There's a good chance I will, because first of all, I'm buying 100 shares, okay? And Apple is a, is a heavily traded stock. So there's a lot of a lot of shares traded out there. But if I want to buy 100,000 shares of Apple, yeah, I, I wish I can, I can do that. Then, although the ask price is 365.62, when I place the order, most likely it will be a little bit higher, unless, there's somebody else who wants to sell 200,000 shares of Apple, then the price could be even lower. The point is, what, what I see, if I place a market order, this price is not guaranteed. The 365.52 is not guaranteed. This is the latest time the, 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 the Apple was sold at, okay? So the next time, it could be close to it, okay? So this remember, the market order, it's not guaranteed. It depends on many factors. So the posted prices are actually actually represent commitment to trade up to a specified number of shares. So they could be for 1,000 shares, but if you want to buy 2,000 shares, there's a good chance the price could go up unless that moment specifically somebody else wants to buy 5,000 shares, then you could even buy it less than what you were seeing. The point is you don't know the price. Now, if you buy S&P 500 stock price, there's a good chance you may got that stock within a few pennies. But if you buy Russell's, at 2,000 stocks, because it's not actively traded, the price could be different. So the best price that was quoted may change before your order arrives. So make sure market orders, you may not get that price exactly. So cause an execution at a different price from the from the one at the moment that you saw the, the order. Now, so what should you do? Well, what you should do is you should place a price contingent order. And what is price contingent order? Here you specify what price you want to buy at and what price you want to sell at. So the investor may place order orders specifying prices at which they are willing to buy or to sell. Here you are specifying the price. So you might place what's called a limit buy order and you will instruct the broker to buy some number of shares if and when they obtain a below at or below stipulated price. And we'll, we'll look at an example in a moment. And you could also place a sell limit, instruct the broker to sell it when the price rise above a specified limit. Let's take a look at an example. And again, this is from my brokerage account showing you a sample. Let's assume I want to buy 100 shares of Apple. Okay, so Apple, I want to buy 100 shares quantity, and I want a limit. I, right now, if I want to buy, the latest trade is 365.52. Well, guess what? I, I want to buy it only if it drops to 360.25. So notice the buy, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the limit is I place it below because think about it. I'm not gonna ask the computer to buy it at 366. Why would I do that if I can buy it at 365.52? So I want to buy it once it reaches 360.25. Once it reaches 360.25, assuming somebody is willing to sell 100 shares at that price, which is Apple's very active, I will buy it. Now the same thing could happen. If I want, if I have Apple shares, I can sell the 100 shares at a limit. So let's assume it's traded at 365.52, and I'm concerned, I would say, look, if it reaches 364, sell it. Means I want to sell it, if it keeps on dropping, I want to sell it at 364. Or if I want to sell it at 365.25, or I want to sell it when it reaches 366, I can place that order. So the sell is basically, once it reaches a certain price, if I have it, sell it for me. Okay, so you could have a buy, or a sell limit, buy or a sell limit. Now you could also have what's called, if I have shares of Apple, I could have what's called a stop. What is a stop? It means once, once, so let's assume it's trading right now, notice 
uh, selling at 366.22. And let's assume I'm concerned that Apple might keep on dropping. So I'll place a stop order. I would say once it reaches 365, once it reaches 365, I'll place the order to sell 100 shares once it reaches 365. So hold on a second. What's the difference between the stop and the limit? Stop means it means once it triggers that price, the next the next or the next the next trade will be yours. So it, it reaches that trigger point. So once it reaches 365, it may go up to 365. 25 or it may go down to 364.75 so it reaches that stop you sell same thing when you want to buy let's assume you want to buy apple you tell the system once it reaches 370 you want to you want to buy you may buy it at 370 but you may buy it at 371 it's a different color. or you may buy it at 369 it's a different color. okay i'll pick the green is that okay? Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay, that's it. <laughs> okay, Dada. Okay, so my son wants me to change the uh, color. So, um, so the stop order basically once it reaches that number, you may you may buy it at three seventy, or you may sell it at three seventy, or buy it, or it may not. It's it once it reaches that price, it triggers. There's also stop then limit. Stop means it's one. It reaches that once it reaches three seventy or three sixty. Then you, you automatically place a limit order to sell it at 359. Then you specify what you want to sell it at. So it's a stop limit. And the same thing, there's a buy stop limit. It means once it reaches that price, I'm going to place a price to, to buy it. Because the stop alone, you don't know what the next trade is. The stop limit, it triggers, it got there, then you want it to uh, buy it or sell it at that point. Let's look at the trading mechanism. So how do you buy and sell stocks? Well, an investor who wishes to buy or sell shares, you place the order with your brokerage firm. Usually it's on the computer. You don't call them or see them or anything like that. Broadly speaking, there are three ways, three trading system employed in the US. One is over the counter, OTC. The other one is electronic communication network. And the third one is a specialist market. The electronic trading is by far the most relevant. Simply put, over-the-counter is electronic, and obviously electronic is electronic as well. Specialist is a little bit different. We'll talk about the specialist. So those, but the best-known markets such as NASDAQ or the NYSC actually uses a variety of trading procedures. The NYSC, they still use this market, uh, this specialist market. NASDAQ uses electronic platform so let's take a look at the over-the-counter or specifically we're going to talk about the nasdaq what is over the counter over the counter is an informal network of brokers and dealers who negotiated sales of prices think about a bunch of people and there are roughly 3500 securities traded on the otc over the counter and there are thousands of broker dealers registered with the sec to trade on this platform so basically in 1971 this is how it all started the national association of security dealers introduced its automatic quotation system or nasdaq to link broker dealers in a computer network where price quotes could be displayed and revised so when nasdaq started it was just only a system a computer system think about the 1970s computers where they could show you the price of the stock what's the what's the latest price of the stock now if you want to buy and sell you would have to actually talk to the other person, talk to them on the phone. So dealers could use the network to display, notice to, to show the bid and the ask prices, which is price quotation. Now NASDAQ obviously had progressed far beyond just a quotation system. Now the system can execute the trade. Now market allows for electronic execution at quoted prices without the need for direct negotiation, without the need to call someone. And the vast majority of trades are executed electronically. In the next session, we'll talk a little bit more about the rise of electronic trading in the US. So we'll talk about this topic a little bit more. Another system, electronic, uh, the ECN, which stands for elect Electronic Communication Network, and this one is basically its electronic system allow participant to post market and limit orders over a computer system over a computer network and we'll talk about those again in the next session the limit order book is available to all participants so all participants who, who participate in this network they can see the limit order they can see what prices people are willing to buy and sell at limit prices orders orders that can be crossed it means the system will match them so if there's somebody want, wants to buy Apple at 365 by 100 shares and someone wants to sell Apple 
at 365 100 shares the system will match them now i do i do part not i do participate basically i do have access to this ecn i'll actually i will show you in a moment on the next slide for example in order to buy shares at 149.75 or lower will be immediately executed for 149.75 when there's somebody is willing to sell so it automatically does this ecn or true trading system not price quotation a computer network their computer networks that allow direct trading without the need of market makers Okay, they're attractive because of the speed at which the trade can be executed without any intervention. Now, I do have access to the an ECN system. I don't know exactly which ECN system, but basically, once the market closes, I have Charles Schwab account. I can go to my extended hours, and I can click on the extended hours. Now, the extended hours are closed, but when I click on the extended hours, I can buy shares when even the market is closed. Why? Because I, I, I'm part of this ECN, my my Charles Schwab account is part of the ECN, and there's somebody else out there, if I want to buy, they want to sell, if I want to sell, they want to buy, and they matched us, they match us electronically. Now there's the specialist market, and this is basically kind of old in one way or another, not old, but it's going away little by little. The specialist serves as a dealer in the stock and provide liquidity to other traders. So what is a specialist? It's, it's usually a company, but it represented by a person, by a physical person on the floor. So brokers wishing to buy or sell shares for their client direct the trade to the specialist post. There's a post, there's a physical post on the floor of the exchange. It looks something like this. And when I worked with Merrill Lynch a long time ago, they took us to the NYSE. We were just new employees and they showed us all of this one day. So basically the way it works, let's assume this is the specialist. Let's assume someone in California, they want to buy 100 shares, 100,000 shares of Apple computers, of Apple. Here's what happened. They have a Charles Schwab account. Automatically, Charles Schwab, the system, they will try to match. So somebody wants to buy 100,000 shares. They will try to match it with somebody who wants to sell. The system does this. Sell somebody, in this, this person in California and this person in Florida. Somebody wants to sell 100,000 shares in Florida. So they match the order. So let's assume somebody wants to buy 100,000 shares and in the whole country there's only 75,000 shares. At this, sec at, this, at this moment, they want to sell on the network. So what happened is, what happened is you cannot fill the order. What's going to happen is you're going to have 25,000 shares remaining of Apple. So here's what happened. Automatically, Schwab will send a signal to their guy. This is Schwab's guy on the exchange and they say we need immediately to buy 25,000 shares of Apple computers this guy will go to the specialist this guy is the specialist who specializes in Apple computers this could be JP Morgan could be someone else and they'll be able to get to them get them the 25,000 shares obviously they'll be a little bit more at a higher price because there's not enough seller but the point is they will they, 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 they will make a market in that stock so they will they will make sure you will get your stock so a company that makes a market in the shares of one or more firms maintain a fair and orderly market if this person did not exist and there's an order to buy 25,000 shares the price could, could jump substantially but here comes the specialist and they will sell it from their own stock they'll say if you want Apple just come to me I will I will buy I will sell you Apple okay so they will have it in their inventory again the specialist has been largely replaced by electronic communication network okay why because everybody is trading online and there's enough buyers and sellers to keep the market orderly okay they are still one of the most important means by which stocks are traded bear, bear that in mind okay the, because when there's imbalance you'll need to go to those specialists so the specialists maintain a limit order book of all outstanding uh, unexecuted limit order so they see what's going on if there's any limit order and they can project if there's a lot of buyers or sellers and they will try to kind of match them with the best prices in the next session we would look at the rise of electronic trading as always i would like to remind you to like my recording share it put it in playlist if it benefits you it might benefit other people and don't forget to visit my website farhatlectures.com if you are planning to complement or supplement or supplement your accounting or finance courses or cpa or cfa exam good luck and study hard